Real quickly before we jump into it, Code Espresso is now on a flash sale of 30% off over at GFuel.com. So if you guys want to check it out, try a new flavor for the first time, restock, or just want to get the gist of it, Code Espresso gets you 30% off your entire order. So check it out. We're down to the final 24 hours or so of the first weekend of the Modern Warfare beta. And with that comes a lot of experience already under the belt for some players. Some players getting closer to trying it out for the first time. But today I wanted to take a general look at some of the things that I've been playing around with here, share it with you guys, and some general thoughts on some classes, some weaponry, and all things that it may loop back around to. Today I want to share with you guys a few very similar class setups, and then one a little off the beaten path that I've been really rocking and enjoying within Modern Warfare in the hopes that they can do well for you and your gameplay. Bear in mind these work well for me, they very well may not work for you, or they could work perfectly for you. It just comes down to how compatible my playstyle is compared to, say, yours, and if you can get the feel for them, and if you have the weapons ranked up to get to the points where we have some of these attachments unlocked. Because as we'll see as the year progresses and as we get that full build coming out later next month, it will be something that does take a little bit of time before you can actually max out each of your weapons, because there's presumably going to be probably 60 ranks for rifles, 50 for SMGs and shotguns, and so on and so forth. So there's going to be a lot of attachments, a lot of weapon levels to break through, but if you can end up getting through that and of course setting it all up, you should have a good time. That said, let's jump into the weapon classes. Let's start out with the ones that are very similar here at this, and I say very similar in the way that I play them almost all identically, but across the M4A1, the M13, and the AK-47. These, I find that ARs are very dominant within this game. SMGs, depending on the loadout, depending on the weapon itself, can be very good. I have been mapped by the MP5, I have been mapped by the MP7, but a lot of times I do feel like I can win a gunfight close quarters with a rifle, which that might not be your first pick in a gunfight, but they end up working out. Now, for this, the design approach here with these class setups were to try and mold a specific set of mobility, but also an ADS speed, because ADS and sprint out in this game is relatively slow compared to recent years, and it's definitely something you'll probably notice. So with these loadouts, I wanted to mitigate those issues before they would even pop up, something that would give a level playing ground to help out both of those major aspects, which do have attachments that can go one way or the other, but finding that balance is sometimes tough. While honestly, a lot of the attachments used on this class setup we'll talk about with the M4 is almost identical, if not identical, on the M13 and AK-47, how I run them, it is situational. Some of these weapons do have better damage properties, some have better ranges, some have better fire rates, so it really is situational in the sense of whichever one you want to use here out of this. Let's start with the base M4 because I feel like the M4 is definitely that most versatile weapon within Modern Warfare so far, at least from what we've seen in the beta. Now, for this, I end up running an optic, a stock, a perk, a grip, and then an underbarrel attachment as well. For the optic on this one, I only run just a standard default reflex optic sight. Adds a little bit more precision, it sacrifices a bit of that ADS speed, which when we come back to the M13, we'll see that I don't run the same thing here on that because you can actually, with one particular attachment, change out the optics so that unlike all the other ones, you don't sacrifice the ADS speed, you actually gain some with that. But we'll come back around to that whenever the opportunity arises. I just personally like on the M4, a nice Nice red dot, especially at range. Then I end up adding on the lightweight stock here at this one, which adds a little more movement while aiming down sights and walking, but it does sacrifice your idle sway control and your aiming gun steadiness. Those are reversed if you end up utilizing the heavy stock, which is totally fine. I use that as well, and it does help out a lot, but I also like moving around given the circumstances in the game currently. It's something that you want to be able to strafe or pre-aim corners potentially while also keeping that movement up so that you have the ability to get around the map rather quickly. You're not stuck in one position with that. So the lightweight stock, I think, does sacrifice a little bit, sure, in that control, but for the mobility aspect of it, it is definitely nice. Along with that, I end up running the stippled pistol grip for its rear grip. With this, we end up getting back some ADS time and also that sprint to fire speed or that ADS out time while only having to sacrifice a little bit in that idle sway control. Additionally, I end up using a vertical foregrip for that underbarrel attachment, which adds more vertical recoil control in exchange for some movement speed. And we add movement elsewhere, so whenever I think about that, when it comes down to handling, I feel 
like it levels the playing field a little bit further. We don't have to go full on out in that mobility, but instead by sacrificing just a little bit more for that extra control, I think it's okay. I think it's something that works itself out. And for the weapon perk, I end up running Frangible Wounding. This allows any damage done to enemies to have a wounding effect where it disables health regeneration for a brief period of time. So if you end up going on a hunt for a kill, you have a better chance if they can't heal for six or seven seconds compared to even four or five. Now, the rest of that class setup is now finished out with a Desert Eagle as the secondary. You can put any attachments you really want on that. I'm not too much of the person that switches to the secondary unless I absolutely need to. I'll end up running the perks of Scavenger, Ghost, and Battle Hardened. Battle Hardened and Ghost probably being the two that are the most useful. Double Time is one that I would definitely say is a very viable option for Scavenger, but if you want that ammunition to stay alive and you can just pick up more instead of having to rely on your ammunitions box, that's always a good choice. But Ghost is something that doesn't let you get seen by the minimap or the radar, and it's something that is like the old versions of Ghost, where you can be sitting completely still and you're still not seen by the enemy at all. So it is something that is, I think, going to be a crutch perk if it's not adjusted in some capacity or if the way the community reacts with it isn't handled. But then Battle Hardened is something that you could easily throw on Overkill if you really want a secondary that's decent. But Battle Hardened is something that I use because I find the stuns are absolutely one, abundant in terms of how many are thrown, and also two, they last forever. So I like to be able to decrease any effectiveness my enemy may have whenever they hit me with one of those just for my own well-being. Then I end up finishing it out with a frag and flash grenade. Now, talking elsewhere about these class setups, again, I talked about the next two rifles being very similar. The AK-47 is the next one we'll talk about here because we end up running the same things up until one final attachment. We end up running the operator reflex sight, the lightweight stock, frangible wounding as that perk, and a vertical foregrip. But the difference we make here with the AK-47 as compared to the M4A1 is we end up utilizing a muzzle break and nothing in terms of a barrel adjustment. This for the muzzle break is something that will add recoil control. You're going to sacrifice a little bit of ADS speed and gun steadiness, but I think that it's an overall decent trade-off given the AK has more kick than the other rifles that we've seen so far. We'll of course have things in the full game like the FR556, the Odin, which does have a higher kick, that Kilo 141 or ACR, and then that FAL and SCAR that we have yet to play around with. But for the three rifles we have now, the AK definitely has the most kick, I think, if you just hold down that trigger. So reduce Using that in any capacity is absolutely fantastic. Same thing goes with that vertical foregrip. As for the secondary perks in Lethal and Tactical, literally the exact same thing I run here on this one. As for the other rifle, closing this out though, for the other primary weapon that I've been just rocking non-stop, that being the M13. Very similar again here at this, where we have four of the five attachments actually identical. I play a lot of my play styles very close to the book and very comparable if you can't tell, but we end up changing out the difference though in the optic, because with this one, we end up trying to make this thing a mobility rush happy weapon setup and the biggest thing here with this is that you want to make sure that you have a nice sprint out time or an ads time and that standard operator reflex sight won't really do any of that but if you end up equipping the four times hybrid that's actually the only optic that offers anything different in terms of just precision sight picture or a zoom level instead this actually has three pros to it with no downside affecting the ads speed as all the other optics do if you end up including the four times hybrid on your class setup you'll end up getting a buff to your magnification the way that you can toggle it you end up having that toggle for the reflex and the scout sight but you also end up getting aim down sight speed back. This is only then balanced out by the loss of a little idle sway control and also a little of the zoom level, which ultimately doesn't hurt all that bad if you swap to the holographic sight on it. So if you want a very run and gun rifle class setup with probably the most mobility and also probably the best ADS speed, this isn't a bad way to do it. And again, as with the AK and the M4, playing it very close to the chest again, secondaries, perks, lethals, tacticals, same thing. I'm gonna wrap this video up with a class setup that I've been playing around with here for this weekend as well that has kind of just been my mess around class setup, but is one that honestly I really do enjoy, and it's a sniping class, which at the very beginning back in May, back whenever we also saw the game revealed at the August reveal event in the public, I wasn't too keen on sniping. I just wasn't really keen on how slow the ADS time was for this, but once you start to use it, you start to get the hang of it a little bit more. Granted, I still think there are some things you should adjust that definitely will make this better, and I think that once we get the full weapon 
and unlocks available, we'll be able to see that way better once we get up to rank 50, 60, whatever it may be. But right now for what we have, what I find does well with this is the heavy duty barrel, the heavy stock, a bipod, a stippled pistol grip, and then frangible wounding. The heavy duty barrel will add a little bit more in that damage range, that bullet velocity, while only sacrificing a little bit of the ADS speed, which I mentioned you want to try to buff that up as much as you can, but that's something that the pros and the cons equal out in my book. Then the heavy stock is something that allows you to have idle sway control as well as aiming gun steadiness while sacrificing a little bit of aiming while walking movement speed, which truth be told, there's not many times that I'm going to be doing that when I'm sniping. I'm either going to be trying to quick scope something or I'll be holding down a power position just being that overwatch. The bipod offers a crouched and prone recoil and sway control increase with not sacrificing anything else. The stippled pistol grip makes up for that lost ADS speed that we end up seeing earlier on in that loadout, plus also makes the sprint to fire speed a little bit better while only sacrificing a little idle sway control and then of course frangible wounding inflicts that extra little damage that delays the health regeneration as for the secondary this is where we start to break away from things that we've seen previously of the last three setups that being where we run overkill we run the m4 with this class setup utilizing the short barrel so we can get a little bit more of that ads and movement speed the operator reflex sight the lightweight stock for a little bit more movement speed as well the vertical foregrip to combat that upward kick of the recoil and of course frangible wounding. Other perks include ghost and battle hardened as we normally see and then also I throw on a claymore here with this one instead of just your standard frag because if I'm sniping and holding down some overwatch I can put a claymore on those stairs and have my six covered for just a little bit of time. But ultimately those are the class setups that I've been really playing around with here in this beta. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Do you guys like the look of this? Have you liked any weapon in particular? And if so let me know your thoughts on what they may be whether that be your favorite weapon, your favorite class setup, your favorite loadout, whatever it is let me know but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare all things during the beta and of course ramping up towards launch and after as well if you enjoy any of that hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing and if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best place to get connected outside of youtube practically live on both those if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question wherever it may be that link is down there in the description below but outside of that, thank you guys all so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace